Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Happy weekend. Hopefully, you've got some great plans this weekend. Thank you for joining me. If you are joining me when the show debuts on Saturday, always appreciate being able to bring you a new show, a new fresh show every single day here on the Cabral Concept. And on the weekend, we debut our Cabral House Call shows. Cabral House Calls is me answering our community's questions each and every weekend every single weekend, and we try to answer about a dozen questions per weekend. So today is, what, August 7th, and this show's debuting, episode 2010. So if you'd like to follow along with the uh, community questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2010 for the questions. All right, I am opening up the massive document of questions, thousands upon thousands and thousands of questions answered. And uh, we always have a couple hundred in the queue. Uh, We are most likely probably about eight weeks or so behind. I'm still scrolling to get to the fresh ones. There we are. All right, last week we left off on 2004, which means this week is 2010. All right, a lot of great questions, no doubt about it. We're picking up on 614. That means June 14th. That means we picked up one week. Yay. So we are now just seven weeks behind your questions. Again, if you wrote in before June 14th, your question was already answered on a previous house call on the weekend. And uh, if you came in after June 14th for your question, well, it'll be answered on an upcoming show. Let's get into our first question of the day, and that is from our friend Ruth. Ruth says, Hi, Dr. Brawl. My daughter introduced me to your podcast, and I'm so glad she did. I listened to your podcast 1173 on why you need to boost your low T naturally. I have been getting the pellet hormone replacement therapy for a few years, and the day I listened to your podcast, I just got pelleted again. I think it'll be the last one after listening to your podcast because I have had a total hysterectomy two years ago. I thought the pelleting would give my body what it no longer can do by itself. I also had very low libido and drive at the time. I'm an obese 67 year old female, gained 20 pounds since the hysterectomy. Would you recommend I stay off the HRT, try to supplement, use vitamin D, magnesium, full spectrum, uh, using picolinate? I already have high cholesterol, and you mentioned that HRT could raise it even more. I'm currently on phase three of the cell core detox. I have chronic stress because I'm in pain. All right, so let's get into exactly some uh, some help for you. So one, I always have to give you the disclaimer. I'm not pri- providing any medical advice here. I'm not providing any medical treatments, and I'm not diagnosing a curing disease. What I do is I help people get to the underlying root cause of all disease because there's always an underlying root cause because unless it's congenital, meaning like you were born with it from birth, it happened when you were 8, 16, 35, 49, 63, et cetera, right? It came later in life, which means, well, you always had the same genetics, so why did it happen later in life? So there's always an underlying reason. You filled up that rain barrel and then boom, there you go. Okay, something happened, right? It's happened to most of us. Mine happened at an early age at 17. A lot of people not till 34, right? Much later in life or maybe even later. So I can't give you medical advice for stopping your hormone replacement. And typically I would never recommend that. Uh, You'd want to slowly wean down or you'll probably feel terrible going from putting testosterone in your body and then not putting any in, right? So you typically want to wean down with your doctor and then while building it up naturally. Honestly, I can't recommend other uh, like detox-based programs just because I'd have to look them up, look through the ingredients, find out how they're manufactured, if they're manufactured in the United States. I honestly don't know. So I can tell you this, um, we know how to help people. What we do is we want to figure out what is wrong with your body. I would love for you to run the big five, Yes, a functional medicine detox, I can absolutely uh, recommend for the most part for people. But if you have high stress, you have high cholesterol, what are the reasons for that? Again, we have to look at that. Um, You had obviously a knee replacement. What you've 
keep listening to the podcast because I want you to know that we help people first lose the weight if they need to lose the weight. Because if you lose the weight, not for vanity purposes, for health purposes, so many of your wellness-based issues go away because so much of the inflammation goes away and you have to rebalance the hormones to make it happen. So, you know, again, I would, you, since there are a couple of things going on, what I would love for you to do is run the big five. If you can't run the big five, at least do the at least do the starter kit plus the stress hormones, mood and metabolism. So we look at your thyroid, we look at your vitamin D levels, we look at your hemoglobin A1C, we look at your insulin, your cortisol, all those uh, good numbers. So that's what I would do. Um, or of course, you can always just join our health coaching team as well and, and actually work one-on-one with our health coaches and get everything customized along the way. And you can find that by going to equa.life forward slash health dash coaching. You can also work with any one of our level two integrative health practitioners anywhere in the world. And you can find them by going to integrativehealthpractitioner.org forward slash practitioners. All right. Luke's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Sorry for the controversial question, but I need some guidance. My wife and I just found out that she's pregnant after a very long journey in trying to conceive. During this time, we've done lots of research and decided not to vaccinate or have any unnecessary medical intervention intervention during the pregnancy and beyond. My wife and I would like to know what else uh, we would consider doing to make sure that the baby has the best start in life. We both take level three daily protocol, have done all the major protocols from equilibrium uh, in preparation to having our baby. We follow your recommended diet. We exercise. We removed all the toxins from the home and other things. I believe that this is enough for us to give our baby the best start to life. But is there anything else that we should consider? We know that we are up for some pushback from friends and family for our decisions, but we just want to make sure that we are doing the best for our baby. Thanks in advance for your guidance with this. All right, Luke. So you know it's the one topic, maybe there's another one out there, but this is the only one that I really know of that I'm not allowed to speak on. Uh, No one is actually allowed to speak really on this topic uh, or your videos will be taken down and and most likely your podcast. So, you know, again, I look at the sum of my work. I'm trying to help so many people. And if I talk about this one topic and all my work gets taken down uh, or or it's just controversial or whatever, it's just, it's not what I'm looking to do right now. There are many other people that can share all of this advice with you as well. So what I do is just say, hey, how can I help people get healthy from the best of my ability? and support people with any lifestyle choice that they decide to make, right? So people want to be on medication, I help them while being on medication. People want to take a hormone replacement, I help them while on a hormone replacement. And the same goes for anything. My job is to help. It's not for me to tell you what to do in life, right? So you're doing great. Um, you're your wife is already pregnant. So we're not going to talk about any more detoxes. We're not going to talk about heavy metal detoxes, intestinal cleanses, any of that, none of that. Uh, you're doing great. Just make sure your wife is getting the 800 to a thousand grams of methylfolate per day, right? It's taking the level three and you just need to add what you need to add 400 to 500 milligrams of, uh, methylfolate. And, uh, and that's about it. So what else though? The last thing I would say is, well, um, Gut flora is a great thing and a very important thing for a vaginal based birth. So just make sure uh, that you know you're and your wife's doing the daily probiotic support. So she's probably fantastic. She's probably great. So there really doesn't seem to be any issues. I mean, if I can give you maybe one piece of advice, it's maybe like maybe the month before conception, she do the clean gut probiotic, which will uh, be a probiotic, but it'll help push out. And if there's any little extra yeast, which sometimes can accumulate because of any changes um, in vaginal pH uh, flora. So that would be helpful. But besides that, you're doing a great job. I mean, you really are doing a great job. I, I can't... Uh, All I can say is keep on keeping on, all right? Sally's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I was wondering if you could explain what secretory IgA is. After suffering with digestive issues, bloating, gas, et cetera, for a few years, I did a stool test and my secretory IgA came back very low. My doctor tried to explain what it is and what I can do, but I didn't really understand it. I've been listening to your podcast for years. Therefore, I know that you have the amazing ability to explain difficult medical terms and make them more digestible, pun intended. So I would be very grateful if you could tell me more about it. In particular, what lowers secretory IgA? And what I can do to fix it. Thank you very much, Sally. All right, Sally, I appreciate that. I mean, I appreciate um, you saying that I'm 
have the ability to explain the, the difficult concepts, which is my job. I mean, that's literally my job. That's why I do this. It's why I wrote the rain barrel effect. It's why I do a daily podcast because, um, for the most part, you can see people's Instagram posts as a practitioner or a doctor, and they write them in a way to try to impress you. I have no interest in that. I really haven't. Like I, I probably did like 20 years ago, but I certainly don't now. Uh, just because I'm not looking for accolades from other doctors. Like that's people write posts for other doctors. I'm not looking for accolades from other doctors. I want to help the most people possible. And that's what I would be known as, like as a doctor, integrative health practitioner for the people. That's it. I want to help people, right? So if I started talking about secretory IgA, secretory immunoglobulin A, and all these different types of things, then great. Maybe a lot of other doctors uh, or practitioners would be impressed. No interest. Uh, so let's talk about it again in real world terms. Secretory IgA is really your first line of defense. Think of it as, so immunoglobulin, just think of them as white blood cells. Those white blood cells circulate in the mucus of your nose, your mouth, and all down your digestive tract and right around your digestive tract. So they're there actually to fight off viruses and bacteria and pathogens, anything that could get in there, especially viruses, right? So when you see that someone's low secretory IgA, it's not ideal because they don't have a lot of that frontline first defense. Now, I understand this and know about it fairly in depth because I had a zero, a zero when I was 19 years old for secretory IgA. So you don't get lower than zero. They don't do negatives. And I was sick every two weeks, especially in the wintertime, October through April, every single year, recurrent sinus infections, recurrent sinus infections, recurrent sinus infections. You need secretory IgA. You need immunoglobulins to fight off all those viruses that are coming in and normal bacteria. So how does secretory IgA become low? Stress, heavy metals, chronic inflammation, chronic gut permeability. There are others, but any constant assault on the body will eventually weaken and lower your immune system when it's chronic over time. I had Edison's disease. I had, you know, POTS. I had yeast overgrowth, SIBO, uh, H. pylori, massive amounts of intestinal permeability, heavy metals like mercury. That was my, my big one, food sensitivities. So when you have those, it's just an assault over and over every day. So then how do you go about improving secretory IgA? Reduce the assaults, empty the rain barrel. I don't know if you've ever heard about the rain barrel effect, wrote a little book on it. Uh, and it explains exactly how to end up rebalancing the body. So literally empty your rain barrel, food sensitivities with diet, right? I can go through the whole like diet, exercise, stress reduction. You want to do them all. And I really detailed it in the rain barrel effect. Keep in mind, at least I'm going to try to keep it for this year. At least for this year, the book is completely free. Just go to stephencabral.com. I pay for the printing. You pay for the shipping. That's it. Literally, you just pay for the shipping and handling. We pop it in a mailer. We put it in the mail. You get a free copy of the rain barrel effect. You just pay shipping and handling. So that is my highest, highest recommendation because it's not one thing, but I'll tell you this, my secretory IgA is normal now. I mean, I never in a million years would have thought my secretory IgA would be like a normal person. And yay, I'm a normal person. Uh, you can't overexercise. You can't, you just can't do all the things that weaken the body. Now, again, I never in a million years would think that I could just work out with a friend of mine uh, just last Friday. We went through a full workout, two tri-sets, plus a three exercise warm-up uh, for a good 45 minutes, really hitting the weights, felt great. Really felt great. I mean, it's if you knew where I was before for that to happen with Addison's disease and with myelogic uh, encephalomyelitis, with exercise intolerance, you would have never believed it. Never. All right. Thanks, Sally. And hopefully that's helpful. Always happy to do a follow-up as well. David's up next. There are multivitamins that have an AM and PM formula. Uh, or are taken separately. One reason is to control certain vitamins and mineral ratios. This is based on science that says there are different nutrients that compete against or inhibit the absorption of other nutrients. Examples, I found online where iron can have a negative effect on zinc absorption. Folate can mask the symptoms of B12 deficiency. Vitamin A interferes with the absorption of vitamin K. And aim to take calcium and magnesium supplements at least two hours apart. 
Is this something we should be concerned, considering when evaluating a multivitamin? Does the dosage and formulation of DNS control for nutrients that compete or inhibit absorptions of other nutrients? Thanks so much. Yeah, it's a great question. The problem is that the, and, and all of it is, is technically true. So vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin E, and vitamin D are all fat soluble, so they're always competing for absorption. Zinc and copper are balancing for absorption. Magnesium and calcium are battling for absorption. Uh, so there's always going to be that. However, that your body honestly will take care of its needs perfectly fine. So when you eat a meal, you don't say, well, I can't eat my vitamin K here with my folate or my B12, right? You have to eat my B12 separately. I need to eat my high magnesium food separately. You don't. And not only you can't, and you also take your multivitamins at a meal that's going to have carbs, fat, protein for better absorption. And also, those are going to have their own calcium, magnesium, B vitamins. And in nature, if we look at it and we look at um, these foods, we say, oh, interesting, these dark green, green leafies, they have our folate and our B12. Oh, and if we look at it, um, you wrote that iron uh, inhibits, let's see which one, iron actually inhibits a few, but let's see, I can have a negative impact on zinc. Yes, but iron can actually have an impact on anything else that competes for oxygen as well inside of the cell. So like some of the Bs, some of the zinc, some of the magnesium. Now, the thing is, we're not taking mega dosages and we're also taking them through the day. So let me just give you, and I don't have a, I actually don't have a problem against AM and PM multivitamins. I don't. Um, we just do ours a little bit differently. Let me just share why. Okay. So you have your multivitamin or your DNS. We do the DNS two scoops in the morning. It gives your body all the nutrients that it needs for the day. Um, it's time released from digestion when you make it as a smoothie, probably about a couple hours for digestion. But then what's happening is those vitamins and minerals are working over the course of probably about another six to eight hours, up to 24 hours. And we know that because we actually test the urine to see the vitamins come out. So, you know, we can look at that. Okay. So your body's using those. They're free circulating when your body needs them. They're taking them in. Great. They're definitely most bioavailable within the next six hours. Now for the multivitamin, some people like to take two at breakfast, one at lunch and one at dinner, or two at breakfast, two at dinner, because our multi is four capsules per day. It's difficult to get a good multivitamin in less than four capsules. So when you're like, oh, one a day is all you need. Well, one a day is not all you need. One a day is a very low dose multivitamin, right? Think about taking two scoops of your daily nutritional support and try to get that into some capsules. It's not going to happen. Now, there's also protein in the daily nutritional support and a lot more. But in our multi, four capsules, two at breakfast, two at dinner, or two at breakfast, one at lunch, one at dinner, that's going to give you all your nutrients you need as well, spaced over the entire day. Uh, and again, you're going to get all, you're going to get, again, I want to just mention one other thing. Vitamins are a supplement to a healthy diet. Your healthy diet is trying to give you 80% of all the nutrients you need. It's never going to be able to give you 100%. I haven't seen it to today because soil degradation, uh, people are not eating the same exact diet on a daily basis, so they're not actually tracking all their micronutrients. Anyway, I have, I have podcasts on that. But what I want to share with you is this. Don't overcomplicate your nutritional supplements. Eat healthy, get the majority of your nutrition there. And then there's also no need to mega dose. The only time we do high dose nutritional supplements is when someone's sick or they're on a protocol looking to overcome something and they need that big push. Then after that for maintenance, when you look at the daily foundational protocol level two or level three, it's enough to supplement a healthy diet so that you're not megadosing anything. So great question, David, and hopefully that was helpful. All right. I think that's our time today, but let me see if um, there's uh, if we got our questions. One, two, three, four. All right. Let's do one more. Why would someone get sicker and develop new symptoms by killing pathogens? I have mold toxicity, some candida, and H. pylori. All right. This is a great question as well. It's called a Herxheimer reaction. So what you can do is in stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, type in, um, let's see if I can spell this, Herx, H-E-R-X, Heimer, H. E-I or I-E-M-E-R, Herxheimer reaction. Type that in. You're going to get a, a podcast on actually what Herxheimer reactions are. Because remember, when you kill a pathogen or candida or bacteria and it circulates into your bloodstream, it's one more thing for your liver 
to have to detox, which is why we are so big on a functional medicine detox. It's why before every protocol, we pretty much always do a functional medicine detox, ideally 21 days. If you've never done one before, 21 day functional medicine detox by Equal Life is a game changer. Now, the other reason can be because let's say you're losing weight or you're killing bacteria pathogens inside of a cell, those things were locked away. Now, when they've been killed or you've broken down some fat tissue, right, because you're losing weight, whatever might be happening, those things, again, pour back in the bloodstream. What do they need to do? Circulated by the liver, I mean, cleaned by the liver and the kidneys, or they're pushed out through the skin. These are all signs of Herxheimer reactions, right? Brain fog, headaches, lethargy, um, what else? Skin rashes that I mentioned, acne, constipation, and you got to keep those bowels moving. So again, uh, this is why some people, again, do the functional medicine detox. Also, they'll do things like coffee enemas to speed up that detox as well, which a coffee enema is not to get the bowels moving necessarily. That's not the main reason. The main reason is actually to speed up glutathione production in the liver because caffeine will stimulate glutathione production. Glutathione is the main antioxidant for phase two, and it's used in phase one liver detoxification, which helps then also take the bile and all those toxins, drive it right into the colon and out of your body into the toilet. So that's, again, why they're used in so many different natural health-based practices. All right. Great question, Michael. Really great questions today. I'll be back answering more of our community's questions tomorrow. Stay tuned. Hope you're having an amazing weekend and I'll talk with you tomorrow. If you can believe it, it is already August. And that means in just about three weeks or so, the kids are headed back to school. We get back into a more normal base routine, I guess you could call it. And with that, we need to make sure we're getting our eating on track and also feeding our kids good, healthy, nutritious meals. But in addition to the normal breakfast, lunch, and dinner, sometimes you need an easy go-to. And that's exactly why we created our organic whole food bars over at Equalife. These bars are the cleanest bars on the planet. Literally, you cannot put cleaner ingredients in a bar. Everything is organic or it's wild. Uh, you're looking at a very low calorie snack bar in general, but it also has enough of that sweet in order for you to feel like your cravings been satisfied. It's great for kids. It's also nice to have a couple if you need it as a meal replacement. And right now over at Equal Life, you can get any flavor you'd like, a full box completely free. That's around a $25 value, completely free right now. And again, you can choose from the sunny date, you can choose from the lemon uh, ginger goodness, the chocolate based bar flavors, or the apple cinnamon. Uh, literally everyone has different tastes. They're all delicious. Choose your favorite one get a bunch if you're ordering uh, with family and uh, and try them out. So that is the thing. I'm telling you right now, one of the most popular bars out there right now, the organic whole food bars, select your favorite flavor on all qualifying orders over $129 over at Equal Life right now. So pick up your favorite protocol, your lab test that you've been looking to do, anything else, stock up and get a free box on us, completely free right now while supplies last over at equi.life.com.